And out of the latest on GM and the looming shutdown in Oshawa, the federal government and union leaders are pledging to fight the closure. But Ontario Premier Ford is calling that an empty promise. They're busy picking fights and raising false hope. But in private, they know the GM plant is not coming back. The Premier says the fight ahead for the 2,800 workers affected by the closure is really about finding new jobs and helping families. Unifor National President Jerry Diaz shot back at Ford, saying the Premier is intimidated by GM and called his reaction to the looming shutdown weak. In all, GM is closing five plants in North America. President Trump, meantime, continues to rail against General Motors. He tweeted this morning, General Motors is very counter to what other auto and other companies are doing. Big Steel is opening and renovating plants all over the country. Auto companies are pouring into the U.S., including BMW, which just announced a major new plant. The U.S. is booming. Joining me now with more from our Windsor studio is Ken Lewenza, former president of the Canadian Auto Workers Union. Ken, good morning to you. Good morning to you and the listening audience. So which side do you fall on? We've got Premier Doug Ford saying it's done. GM is closing. They've made up their minds. We've got the president of Unifor and the federal government saying maybe we can fight this. Where do you stand on this? I fall on the side of the community, on the, on the side of the workers, on the side of uh, hope and raising expectations and, and fighting for those jobs. Those jobs are incredibly important. And we can reverse the decision. We have one year to reverse the decision. And if we work as a team and we have all the hands on deck, you know, the community, our union, provincial, federal government, and community partners, I think we can turn uh, this decision around. Why? Now, it won't happen Why do you overnight. think that? You get... Well, because there is products in the product line. I know the corporations, today they're designing vehicles for the future. I know from design to engineering to actually manufacturing is about five years. So today they have vehicles in the system. So the reality is they could certainly, within the next few months, make an announcement that they're going to, um, uh, refacilitate that plant with new product. And you don't think GM has already looked at that option? Well, I think General Motors' uh, decision making in this whole process was absolutely terrible. If they looked at that option, then that means prior to them giving us a commitment just two years ago that they would keep the plant open for the life of the collective agreement, which is another couple years, commit to investment, which they did, and commit to look at alternative products to maximize the efficiency in that particular plant. That's what we got out of negotiations two years ago. So if it's accurate that they did all of this homework, then that means they had the information before they gave the union the commitment in bargaining in the last set of negotiations. So now we have to convince them just to live up to a written negotiated agreement and move on. So I think just by throwing in your cards and saying there's nothing we can do, there's things we can do. The United States is raising um, um, quite a bit of hell, as they should be. Um, the federal government is saying we'll do whatever we can. And I know, you know, there's lots of people saying that it's just not possible. But we have had experiences right here in Windsor where they closed a Ford engine plant. And four or five years later, as a result of the leadership of the union, the community coming together and Ford Motor Company understanding the quality of the workforce, they reopened it. So again, we can get this done if all of the hands are on deck. So you don't think that you're, again, it's, it's these empty promises or false hope or raising expectations for people that maybe should be starting to, to move on and think about another career or another option for them and their families. I, I just think that there is some concern out there that these people are going to believe that this decision can be reversed and then in a year from now they're going to find themselves out of work back, in, back where we are right now. Well, as of last Friday, our members felt secure. Our members felt as a result of what we did in collective bargaining, we actually secured their future. Prior to the bargaining, our members were insecure. Our members were asking themselves what kind of jobs they're going to have in the future. And as a result of negotiations, we secured it for the life of the collective agreement. So our members in Oshawa felt the insecurity right up until the last set of negotiations, and then we affirmed their uh, security. 
So, you know, their emotions, their peaks and valleys have been up and down for the last decade. And today it's down. And our job, quite frankly, is to fight and get it up and raise hope. I mean, at the end of the day, if this is the end resolve, then all the community partners have to come together to try to find jobs, try to, to create opportunities, to retrain, all of those things that you're talking about. But when you lose a plant the size of Oshawa and the spin-off jobs as a result of that, tomorrow there isn't going to be jobs to fulfill um, all of the folks that will be unemployed. Today it's 2,500 direct jobs, multiply that by eight or nine. This is a significant, significant job loss in Canada. And we should just simply say to General Motors, as Jerry's saying, you're making money in Canada, you're making money in the United States, and it's unfortunate that you have to restructure, but don't restructure in areas where you're making money, and they're making money in Canada and the United States. Ken Lowenza, always great to have you with us. Ken is the former president of the Canadian Auto Workers Union.